Hi there, Matthew here with Disaster Area, doing a little video showing how to work with the ADZ and the micro clock. So the ADZ has this jack on the back, this white jack, it's the multi jack. On the ADZ it works a little differently than it does on some of our other devices. Mainly it acts as a MIDI input and output or the tuner out. So if you want to connect your tuner here, you can do that. If you want to connect it to some MIDI devices, you can do that too. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the ADZ and we're going to check out these dip switches inside. So there's two dip switches. The lower one is the buffer Z mode or Z mode. And this controls the input impedance of the buffer. So we're not going to worry about that today. We are going to look at the multi jack mode. And so you can see tuner off, on, off, off, or multi off off on on so they're inverted from each other they all ship with this set to tuner out from the factory and so for our purposes we need to flip that around so we're going to go multi which is off on on so the first switch is one here off and then on on i recommend you use something pointy to do this not your fingernail because if you don't click it all the way it, it might not lock in and work so i would say uh, a retracted ballpoint pen is a good choice a small screwdriver is a good choice, a pick, anything like that. A guitar pick will work fine. So just make sure it's off, on, on. And then we're going to put the lid back on this guy. Get a little brush up here. Okay. Got a little bit of schmoo on it. Okay. And I'm going to put one screw just to keep the lid from flopping around. No bigs. Just a personal thing. Okay. Put one screw in it. And put it over here. The same thing with the micro clock. We've got two banks of dip switches. So the first one controls this jack, multi C, and then the second one is the, the pull ups for the each jack. So A, B, and C. And the pull ups are for use with Strymon devices, a few other things. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip these switches here to on, on, on. And then these guys should all be set to off. And they should be set like that from the factory, but if yours are not for some reason, then go ahead and set them like that. So same thing with this guy. Put one screw in it, just to keep the lid from flopping around. Okay, the next thing we're gonna need to do is configure both of these devices. So I'm gonna power on the micro clock here. And when I power them on, I'm going to hold down the knob. I'm going to push down on this knob and hold it. And when this says setup, I'm going to let go. Okay, so this is the setup mode for the micro clock. If you haven't been in here, there's a bunch of stuff in here. We're going to ignore a lot of it. What we are going to do is we're going to go to the left and we're going to do factory reset, make sure it's all cleared out. So. It says RST, hit the, hit the knob, and the screen will blank. That's okay, don't panic. Turn the knob counterclockwise until you see all, and then tap the button. And it's gonna blink RST, and it's gonna count down from 100. What's happening now is it's erasing all the factory presets, and now we're at 120, and we've got our, everything is all back to factory. So now we're gonna go into the setup again, and again, the reason that we did that before is we just wanted to be everybody on the same page. So pre firmware, serial number, setup. Okay, so now we're in setup mode. So we're gonna move through this. We're gonna go to JC, which is the configuration of this red jack. Tap it and it says NO. So that's normally open, normally closed. Toggle, MIDI, no clock, tap, pre, and these are control voltage, EXP, and then this is the one we want. This is MIO, MIDI, input and output. So we're gonna tap that to get back out, and then we're gonna go through these. We're gonna skip a lot of this stuff. I am gonna turn the brightness up a little bit to make it show up on the video a little bit better. And let's do a violet LED. I always do like the violet. Okay, um, channel is set to 16. So we are going to leave that there for right now that's fine and then we're going to go to sta reset let's see where is it uh, that should do it okay i think that's everybody and we're just going to hold down the knob and save this then we're going to grab a trs cable so this is just a stereo patch cable these are 
it doesn't really matter what kind of cable you use here, it just needs to be TRS, it needs to be stereo like this. Next thing we have to do is configure the ADZ. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna power it on, and while it's powering on, we're gonna hold the D button down. And that'll put us into the MIDI configuration mode. And in this mode, we have a couple of different options, a couple of different settings. The, the important one here is this B foot switch. So if the blue light is on, then we're sending MIDI out from tip and ring here. If the green one is on, we're sending MIDI out from the tip and we have the ring configured to use our uh, one of our cables. But the one we want is both of them off, which is MIDI in and out on the same jack. And then we hold the save button here to save. And now we're ready to go. Okay, so we'll take our cable here, plug it in, and we'll go into the preset mode, which is this mode. And now we're loading presets. So in the default settings, this is factory reset, mid channel 16. These guys should all be set like this. If for some reason you've set your ADZ to a different MIDI channel, this will still work, but you will need to go into the micro clock and set its MIDI channel up to whatever that channel is. So if you have this set to MIDI channel three, you'll need to make sure this is also set to MIDI channel three. So selecting a preset on the ADZ selects a tempo preset on the smart clock, micro clock. And if you were to save a new tempo in here, for example, preset four is 252, save this. Save four, now we get a preset three, 120, preset four is now back our 252. So anything that you load on here, will load on here. And so they're just literally connected with this cable. The setup for the Q Connect is almost exactly the same, except you have to use the Y port, but the other settings are the same. So if you've got any questions, send me an email, let me know. Thanks so much.